visit our website and you will see that we proudly proclaim that we are what college was meant to be. Some may view this as simply a marketing slogan, but it's far more than that. It is our permission to reclaim the idealism that caused an earlier generation to establish liberal arts colleges throughout the states that were being carved from the old Northwest Territory. Colleges like ours were created to advance the public good. Their graduates became the leaders who established a vibrant democratic society on the frontiers of an expanding country. Young men and women came from around the area to live on or near campus, interacting closely with a cadre of faculty dedicated to enriching the lives of those enterprising young people. Colleges were a place where students immersed themselves for four years, and faculty dedicated themselves for a lifetime. The tasks envisioned for Monmouth College at the middle of the 19th century were challenging. If anything, those challenges have become greater over time. Preparing young people to lead a vibrant democracy is no easier now than it was 200 years ago. Ours is an increasingly complex world. Ours is a global society in peril. With a handful of exceptions, young people entering college have much to learn before they are ready to lead us to the promising future envisioned by our founding fathers. If we are to be what college was meant to be, we must challenge ourselves to become one of the country's exemplary educational institutions. At Monmouth, we're proud of our beautiful campus. The wonderful old buildings like Wallace Hall daily remind us of the determination shown by our founders during difficult times. We also think of the dedication of generations of faculty who labored here. In recent years, the remarkable generosity of our alumni and friends has allowed us to transform what was already a lovely campus into one of the most modern and comfortable of any small college in the country. The new and renovated facilities have been a great help, not only in attracting the best students and faculty, but also in making the Monmouth experience richer for everyone. We will continue to enhance the physical plant in the coming months and years but our focus is now on investing time and effort and resources into exceptional educational programs. With those programs, we will convert bright, hardworking young people into citizens ready to make ours a better society. We hope to attract many of the best and brightest students, but they, like all of our students, should select Monmouth College because of quality programs. An institution's short-term reputation may skyrocket if it uses sophisticated marketing techniques and financial inducements to attract students with sky-high SATs, ACTs, and GPAs. These input measures make a college look good. But for the long term, and for the public good, an institution should build its reputation on a solid foundation of excellent educational programs. Monmouth will follow this more difficult route. After all, this college was meant to serve the public good. Our pride and our reputation will be based on the character and accomplishments of our graduates rather than the credentials of our incoming class. This college has always known that an engaged student is a learning student. We will allow that concept to guide our plans to make this special college even better. Several years ago, a group of educational researchers who understood the importance of student engagement launched a national survey to measure the extent to which college students are engaged with their professors, with their classmates, and with the texts they are assigned. It is my goal for Monmouth College to be ranked number one on this survey of engagement. At Monmouth College, engagement takes many forms. Here in our magnificent new Huff Athletic Center, you will see students interacting with faculty, coaches interacting with athletes, faculty and staff interacting with one another, and students interacting with other students. And this happens hundreds of times a day. This building is much more than an athletic center. It's a place to congregate, have conversations, eat lunch, attend classes. During inclement weather, commencement exercises are held right here in the field house. Student fairs are often held in the gymnasium across the concourse. There's an archaeology lecture series that I enjoy attending held here in the building's classrooms. 
We are convinced that a culture of excellence will spill from one activity to another. Monmouth College will be a place that takes full advantage of its residential character. Students and faculty will enjoy the multitude of learning opportunities that extend round the clock. All of this activity will help us achieve what liberal arts colleges were originally intended to do. We will create civic leaders who help promote our democratic society. In a country where rhetoric is increasingly strident, our students will learn the fine art of civil discourse. They will develop the rare understanding of how to persuade and be persuaded by logic and evidence. They will have something to say and know how to say it. They will understand that those with whom they disagree also have something to say, and they will be willing to listen and learn. It's exciting to think about what this college can do. It's also worrisome to think about what might happen if our college and others like it don't rise to the challenge. To some, it may seem arrogant to say that this college can and must contribute to the preservation and promotion of a civil society. Perhaps we're a bit audacious, but isn't that the purpose for which liberal arts colleges were created? And shouldn't Monmouth College pursue what college was meant to be?